Hi, welcome to the channel, Budget Audio Review and Upgrades, and today we're talking about bio wiring. Um, I'm going to give you an idea what it involves, what's happening inside the speaker. So, you, you know, for anyone that don't know, obviously lots of people do, but kind of give an explanation of uh, how it's all wired up inside compared to a normal, like uh, just just two uh, prongs, so to speak, and like just two terminals, left and right. Uh, sorry, not left and right, positive and negative, should I say? Uh, you know, how this compares to uh, a speaker that's bio wireable. And uh, you know, why are speakers bio wireable? Well, I think it was like back in about 1980, this kind of come about 80, 82, somewhere around there. Manufacturers decided to uh, maybe give their speaker an edge, you know what I mean? Give, give it another you know, another like avenue to explore or something like get people interested and in, uh, telling people maybe that they, you know, these sound a lot better bio wired than normal wiring. So, um, you know, get people on board and get people to buy their speaker. And of course, once one company does something, uh, it follows suit that other companies are going to start doing it or they're going to lose out, you know, pretty much like uh, home shopping delivery, like for supermarkets. They don't make any money. Well, they, they maybe just started to make money out of it now, but years ago when they first started, they lost money on that. Uh, but once one company did it, then every company had to do it, so to speak, because if they didn't, they're going to get left behind. Uh, they're going to lose customers, basically. Uh, so that's pretty much the same as speakers, I would have thought, for anything really, like, you know, I mean, if you're not keeping up with the competition, you, you know, you're going to struggle a bit. So once one company kind of come up with this idea, other companies followed, and um, it probably started at mid-range speakers, but these days, you know, when you go to buy a speaker, they're probably on near enough on the bottom of the range speaker, this buyer wiring, because it's going to cost the company next to nothing to, uh, to put this on, they're just two extra terminals, basically, and a, and a couple of bridging plates, which, which, are, which are nothing, you know what I mean? Obviously, these are on the you know, eye end speakers as well, this happens, and... Um, these terminals and speaker plates and brackets and whatever probably like really high quality compared with a budget one but what I'm saying is you know it's not going to cost the manufacturer much more to do this um, so yeah on the video I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to explain what's happening maybe in, you know what's happening inside and a theory of why the sound would be better by bio wiring though I don't know if there's any actual scientific facts I mean this is going to be down to you your personal you know how you, how you can hear it yourself and what you think you know what I mean I will explain it all in the video coming up so um, I'll go over to that now right okay here we have a normal wiring this is be a normal speaker that would be a speaker pretty much like this one here if you can see that with just the two terminals at the back the positive and negative and uh, here's the positive and negative shown here positive and negative and uh, basically you'll connect to these two terminals one set of wires like this you know your normal speaker wire positive and negative it's the wrong way around but uh, there you go positive and negative would be connected to the back of the speaker like so and inside the speaker that would be kind of split where the positive would go to the base unit going through that coal to the base unit back all the way back to the negative completing the circuit and same again, the positive would be connected also to the tweeter going through a one ohm resistor here in this case, a four microfarad capacitor and across uh, an inductor coil there and the tweeter together in parallel and back out again to the negative, thus completing the circuit. So that's a normal wiring of a normal speaker. So now if we go to bio wired, it's exactly the same components, exactly the same speakers, but they're split. Where these were connected before inside, they're separate. So you've got a positive and negative for your tweeter on the back of the speaker and a positive and negative for your base unit on the back of the speaker. So now we want to connect them up to the amplifier. So we go over to the next one. Uh, sorry, I'll just show you this here. This is this is it. This is that complete circuit there, but just using the bridge it, uh, bridging plate there, just a little plate they give you to bridge it. That would link both of them up together and you could use either of the four terminals at the back either pair, red and black, to connect the speaker up. So it's exactly the same as that, just with the bridging plate it, there. So you've got an option of uh, having them bio-wired or just normal. Okay, so back to the bio-wired now. So here we go. This is the back of your amplifier. And you'd have to run two cables from the, this would be say speaker set A. From speaker set A, the right channel we're just showing you here, but it'd be exactly the same for the left. You have to run two wires to your speaker, one for the treble, going into the treble, positive and negative, and another wire, which I say wire cable like this, a twin cable like that. So one will go uh, like so here, like that, and the other one will go from the top to this one here, so to speak. So I think you get the idea there. So it's two cables, one going to the positive and negative of the tweeter, one going to positive and negative of the base unit, and both wires actually connect up to the amplifier on that terminal there, uh, on the right channel, and like I say, it'd be exactly the same for the left. If we go over to here, there is another option of doing this. 
uh, where you could use speaker set A and speaker set B of your amplifier if you've got two lots of speakers on the back of your amplifier outputs on the back of your amplifier speaker set A and B you could just have one wire one twin cable should I say make sure you, you want to say one wire I mean a twin cable like this one going from your right and left uh, positive and negative sorry not right and left your positive and negative of your speaker set A going to say the tweeter or, or the bass unit it's either way but we're doing speaker set A going to the tweeter here and speaker set B that one wire uh, that cut one cable should I say with two wires would go to the bass unit or the uh, red and black of the speaker um, the bi wired speaker so you could wire it up like that this is just one speaker unit with the four connections but to do that make sure you've got your amplifier uh, actually flicked over to A and B speakers so you, uh, this is your speaker select you need both of them because if you just pick A all you're going to get is the uh, tweeter noises, you know, the high frequency noises, shall I say. If you use B, you're going to get the low frequency noises coming out. You would need to pair them up. But there is a, you know, that is another way of wiring up the amplifier. Now, if we go back to the probably normal way that most people would wire it up, we just say this is uh, speaker set A here. Now, the theory is here, you know, I've been looking a little bit on the internet and there and trying to get a, an idea why would it be better to uh, use two wires two separate wires uh, than just have it normally as it would be like this in a normal circuit um, so the main difference here is that these, these still actually connect to each other but the positive here and the positive of this speaker here the bass unit still connect they're still connected to each other but this this way this time they have to go all the way down the length of your cable before they actually connect up here on the back of your amplifier so the length of that cable we go three meters for instance it would be a three meter length before they actually met up but they would meet up pretty much the same as they meet up here in a speaker with just the uh, normal uh, positive and negative uh, they meet up a lot closer here actually inside the speaker where here like I say they've got to travel the length of the cable but they finally still meet up on the back of the amplifier now the theory is here that you're using two pieces of wire so two pieces of wire going to your one speaker unit is going to be half the resistance and a little bit of very bit of capacitance there as well in the cable being next to each other as they're, as they're going they're quite tight next to each other in the cable um, so this may alter the sound very well, the resistance won't but the capacitance may just alter the sound uh, very very slightly uh, I'll say the resistance won't, you know, with the resistance you may, you may be uh, a very tad louder, but uh, it's hardly worth talking about, to be honest with you. But uh, one of the theories is here, that uh, if I can run this past you, maybe just to give you an idea that some of these theories, that uh, how this actually works, and uh, a good one I looked at that uh, I think kind of maybe explains it uh, quite well, is that uh, imagine your amplifier uh, coming out of there, we're going to call the high frequencies uh, motorbikes and we're going to call the low frequency buses. Now these come out, if we go over to this, uh, just a normal uh, speaker setup, they're going to come through your amplifier down just one wire, buses and motorbikes, and there's going to be lots of them, they're going to be travelling fast and they're going to kind of be bumping into each other as they go down the wire, getting in the way of each other. Well, I can't really see it myself, but, you know, uh, you know I'm open to, uh, you know, this could be the case, they're bumping into each other. So if we actually, like, split them up, so there's just motorbikes and just buses coming down the cable, uh, they'll have a much freer, easier ride. So that's what we're doing here, really. We're, as this, as this circuit here only lets the high frequencies through, which is the uh, motorbikes in this case, and this circuit here only lets the low frequencies through, in this case the buses, all the motorbikes come down the cable nicely, and as, as, as the buses can't actually pass through the circuit, uh, not completing the circuit, they, they stop, they're not moving at all, so they've, they've pulled over to the hard shoulder, so to speak. So uh, all the motorbikes are going down nicely, and that keeps them all nice and sweet, and all, you know, it's going to improve the sound, so to speak. Well, in this case, the motorbikes can't pass through this inductor here, so they can't complete their circuit. So they're uh, they're pulled over to the hard shoulder, and all the buses can come along and uh, go down there nicely. This is a theory uh, that maybe explains it for people that maybe not quite, you know, see the idea of why you would use two wires. So like I say, it's all debatable. It's all to how you hear it yourself. You know, if you find that's an improvement and, and you can hear the difference, well, that's great. You know what I mean? I, I'm kind of like up in the air about it, not to actually get a decent set of speakers, a decent set of speakers, you know, a really, really nice set of speakers. 
would I think you may be able to tell the difference because like I say I mean at the moment I've got a couple of pairs of speakers uh, and, and if I go to these more than short 20 eyes for instance they're not a great speaker at all I didn't think so uh, even with the bio wide I couldn't hear no difference whatsoever um, I don't think you're going to suddenly turn a bad set of speakers into a good set of speakers by just using bio wire now another alternative rather than having this amplifier here just one channel this is the right channel like I say two wires one going to the uh, two cables should I say one going to the tweeter one going to the base unit and this is called uh, like a passive um a passive kind of uh crossover a lot of uh, say a lot of people oh, that's the wrong word a few people i think actually uh do it slightly different if i can show you this picture here this is where the amplifier actually in the amplifier that actually sorts out the uh, highs and lows inside the amplifier and the low output, i.e. the bass, would come down one cable, and that's just pure bass. There's no motorbikes, no high frequencies, nothing like that on that cable. It's already been sorted out inside the amplifier, and they just come down that cable by themselves. And this one here is all the eyes, and there's no, there's no buses in there. These are all the high frequencies, and they come down the cable and go to the tweeters itself. So I think that's a more better option. Uh, you know, I don't know how, how are these amplifiers to get or anything like that. I haven't looked into it to be honest with you, but um, I know they're about that uh, where the actual or you can get um, decoders and stuff like that where they're actually, you know, the, 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 it's more of an active, so to speak, uh, crossover. So, just another idea to maybe run past you. This would just be one channel, this is the right channel, like I say, with a low output and an high output, uh, and the actual like the crossover and all that kind of stuff is done inside the speak inside the amplifier then obviously you may need to get rid of some of this circuitry depending on areas in there to kind of balance it up and make it work properly but just to show you that they kind of do exist uh, where they get split elsewhere rather than the speaker uh, actual crossover inside the speaker but um, if we just go back to this one here or even that one there this is what by wire is four terminals and they're actually separated now some people say that the actual signals going straight to the tweeter uh, cutting out the circuitry inside the uh, inside the speaker on the crossover board, but it isn't cutting out the uh, circuitry at all. It's still it's still going to end up going through this one ohm resistor. Still going to end up going through that four microfarad capacitor. Still going to cross the tweeter and the coil, uh, the inductance coil there at the same time. It's not cutting any of them out. You're not suddenly putting the wire straight to the tweeter. You're still going through that part of the circuit. All you're cutting out is where they actually bridge together, i.e. there or there where they actually connect together inside the speaker. So hopefully I'm hoping that I've maybe explained that fairly well and you get an idea of uh, you know, what this bio wiring actually involves. Okay, so I hope that maybe I'm you know, trying to explain there the best I can uh, the theories behind it and how it actually works. And what I would say also is that uh, even if you've got speakers like this, any speaker really can be bi wired. I mean, you can do the alterations yourself, they're not that complicated. All, you want, all you've got to do is actually separate from where these uh, just two inputs here, like the positive and negative, go in, is actually separate. Uh, the parts it's actually going to. I mean, it can be done. You know, you may have to cut a track or something like that. But you know, you could actually put the uh, you know the positive to the. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to split here, the positive goes uh, to the coil here for the base unit, and also it starts off at this resistor and through that capacitor to the treble. So you could like you know put another extra terminals. Would be a lot of mucking about. Uh, you could get this out, drill a couple more terminals there, and actually separate separate the wiring yourself. So you know, pretty much any speaker, even if it ain't by wired at the moment. You could make by wired yourself if you wanted to do that. Uh, like I say, you may have to cut a few tracks and maybe do a few slight, some very slight alterations in the wiring, but it can be done. And um, you know, in doing that, you could you know upset the balance of the speaker, make sure they're airtight. These uh, these connectors, if you do add any more connectors and stuff like that, um, maybe not so much with these you know, with a base port, but any any sealed unit would have to make sure you've done it airtight and no leakage of air in that. But um, yeah, just to say that any speaker can be, uh, you know, by wide really. Okay, um, yeah, so um, I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, maybe, you know, shed a little bit of light and, uh, you know, what's your thoughts maybe on by wide? And can you hear the difference or is it pretty you know, much of a nothing really for, for you? Um, yeah, so that's it really. Uh, to the next video, I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.